Next to Derek Room Correction and MQA Decoding and Rendering, the SA30 offers Google Cast, AirPlay 2, DNA Streaming, Rune Endpoint, both MM and MC Phono inputs, an HDMI ARC input, RS232 for custom install and 2 times 120 watts Class G amps. The Arkham design language, grey cabinet, green display characters and silver knobs and buttons makes the brand recognisable without being visually loud. As might be clear from the introduction, it's a very versatile amp. That doesn't show on the outside unless it's needed. Then the display shows the necessary info. But let's first see where the SA30 fits into a stereo. A streaming amp is the centerpiece in a stereo and, of course, needs loudspeakers connected to it. To facilitate streaming, it needs to be connected to the internet over your modem or router. If you have a computer running either DLA or room server connected to your network, you can play music from there using the matching app on a tablet or smartphone. Transport functions, settings and volume can be done using the comprehensive remote control. This is all that is needed to play music from your computer, streaming services and internet radio. But you can also connect a USB storage medium holding music, a CD player over either digital or analog connections, a tuner or other analog source, a turntable with either MM or MC cartridge mounted and a TV using either Toslink or HDMI ARC. Given the possibilities, the linear power supply and the Class G amplification, the Arkham S30 is relatively compact. It has a standard 433mm width and is 323mm deep. With a height of only 100mm, it is lower than other 120W Class A, Class AB or Class G amps using a linear power supply. Despite the large steroidal transformer, that is squeezed between the bottom and the top plates, the weight of the amp is only 10.7 kilos. On the front right we see the power button with next to it the power LED. Then a series of push buttons. Balance that switches the volume control to balance control. The display brightness selector. The direct button that with analog sources keeps the signal analog. The info button that lets you step through Info on the display, Mute, Direct lets you select one of the three possible direct curves and the two input buttons let you step through the inputs. The menu button lets you enter the settings menu. An aux input and a phone's output are on 3.5mm jack. The large volume control completes the tour of the front. Here we find the IC mains input the voltage selector, the network socket, a USB-A socket for external drive holding music and an RS-232 connector for luxury remote controls. Then the analog inputs, starting with the line inputs that are named CD, PVR for personal video recorder and SDB for setup box. But all three can also be used for other analog sources like tuner or analog outputs of a TV. Then we get two phono inputs, one for moving magnet cartridge and one for moving coil cartridge. The ground terminal for the turntable is located here, in between the analog line level output of the preamp section. This can be used for an extra power amp when biamping or for driving an active subwoofer. Then the digital inputs, starting with two SPDIF inputs named AV and BED for audiovisual and Blu-ray and two Toslink inputs named SAT and GAME. Again, they are just names. Any digital source with SPDIF or Toslink output can be connected here like TV, CD player and game console. The last digital input is the HDMI ARC input. When connected to the HDMI ARC connector on your TV, the TV sound is reproduced over the stereo while the volume control of the SA30 can be adjusted using the TV remote. 
two antenna sockets for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the supplied antennas and two pairs of loudspeaker terminals conclude the tour of the back. The inside is rather crowded. On the left, directly behind the mains input, we find some filtering and fuses. Behind it the large Noratel toroidal transformer. For buffering there are four electrolytic capacitors of 18,000 microfarads. Then we see three circuit boards above each other. The top one does the HDMI interfacing, the larger one below it does the digital interfacing with an AKM digital audio receiver and the AKM AK5552 analog to digital converter for when you want the analog sources passed through the digital processing. For instance if you want to use the direct room correction. Also found here is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module mounted piggyback on the digital board. The board below it holds the analog electronics, the digital to analog conversion using the ES9038Q2M DAC chip and the analog volume control in the shape of a Burr Brown PGA2311U that uses nicely small 0.5 dB steps. Towards the rear we see the Class G power stage with the cooling profile, the power transistors mounted against it and the dual rail power supply in front of it. Class D is a combination of Class A known for its sound quality and lower power and Class AB with its crossover distortion and higher power output. Class G stays in Class A up to a certain level. I guess that's 20 watts here. To switch to Class AB when higher power is needed and crossover distortion is hardly influencing the sound quality. To do this two power rails are used that are switched between depending on the output power needed. The power amp delivers 120 watts per channel in 8 ohms and 220 watts into 4 ohms. Although the SA30 can be operated from the front, using the remote control is far more easy especially since the display uses large characters that can be read from a distance, about 3 meters in my case. It can not only control the amp but also the streaming functions and the Arcam CD player when present. It can also be reprogrammed to control other devices. There is a numerical pad, transport functions, menu keys, amp functions and volume control, colored keys for TV and keys for input selection. Since there are so many inputs, those that are not in use can be switched off so that when selected with the input plus and minus keys on the front, these are skipped. Analog inputs can be routed through the digital circuits so that direct can be used or stay analog throughout the amp. Three direct live curves can be stored and each input can set to use any of these three curves. So you can filter out very low frequencies for phono as a kind of rumble filter. Or use a curve that accentuates speech for TV sound. Analog inputs can be set to process a pass through so that when the left and right pre outputs of a surround processor are connected to that input it switches to a fixed gain. This way you can use your stereo to do the left and right channels of a surround setup. The SA30 has 7 reconstruction filters. Feel free to pick any but I like the appetizing filter best. It also is the default filter. MQA is supported too so when you subscribe to Tidal you can have the full benefit. To use the network based audio you have to select the input named NET. It automatically switches to the incoming string. The SA30 supports DNLA and UPnP AV. DNLA and UPnP AV are effectively two names for the same function. So I use only DNLA as a name. DNLA support means that you can have a DNLA server program running on your computer or NAS and use a DNLA controller app on your smartphone or tablet to select music and set volume, make playlists and so on. The best DNA server program I know is Minim Server. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, QNAP, Synology, Asset Store, ReadyNAS and Melco. The starter edition is free, the full version costs £28 per year. 
To work with DLA, you can also look up the IP address of the SA30 in the menu. Type that into a browser on your computer, tablet or smartphone and give an enter. On a computer you see this screen. Choosing device settings lets you change the name, password protector settings, check for updates and reset settings. Network settings can be checked too and there is info on Googlecast. But the reason I show this is under the web client for there is a DNA controller that lets you select music from your DNA server, a USB stick or streaming service and play it over the SA30. Let me show you what minim server on the NAS does. I'm going to look for Zuko 103 and select the album WA. Once playing the volume can be changed here and the playlist can be displayed. If you don't want to use a browser you can install a DNA controller on your smartphone or tablet. To do so search for DNA controller in your app store and you'll find many free and a number of paid apps. I use Glider. If you are a Rune user you can simply add the SA30 to Rune by going to Setup, then Audio, look for the Arkham SA30 and enter a convenient name. I used Arkham SA30 but you could use Living Room, Listening Room or any name you like. If you use a streaming app like Tidal, Cobus or Spotify you can use DLA, Airplay or Google Cast to send the music from your smartphone or tablet to the SA30. For Tidal it works like this. Select music to play, go to the now playing screen and select the SA30 as speaker. Cobus works the same, Spotify doesn't seem to do DNA so here you choose Apple Airplay 2. The display on the SA30 shows the input on the top line and scroll downwards to show what is streaming in the bottom line. I started in my setup too where the SA30 was connected to the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers. These were supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer connected to the loudspeaker terminals of the SA30 using the RHEL supplied cable. The network connection was made using a CAT6 patch cable to the Uptown Ether Regen switch powered by the Uptown UltraCaps 1.2 power supply. On the dirty side the Ether Regen is connected over a CAT6 patch cable to the central switch on the third floor and from there to the Zigo internet modem. The DLA server program Minim Server was running on the Synology DS1819 Plus NAS and I used the Glider DLA controller app on the iPad Pro 2. Rune Rock was running on a M.2 SSD in an Intel NUC 10i7 FNH and has the music stored on a 10TB Western Digital USB drive. The Room Control app was run on the same iPad Pro 2. The equipment was placed in a target rack. All listening was done using the appodizing reconstruction filter. The first thing I noticed was the stress free sound coming from a wide and deep stereo image. Within that stereo image instruments were well in focus and had a good amount of air around them. Voices were very natural as were brass and strings. Sibilance was remarkably clean for this price category. The same was the case with bass. Although not of the same class, the sound character has a strong resemblance to the air amp in my setup one. Just like with the Marantz Model 40N review, I took the SA30 downstairs and connected it to the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Stack Audio OVA 70 isolators using AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The network connection was made over the Network Acoustics Muon streaming system to the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch that was connected over CAT6 cable to the Zigger internet modem. The Synology DS1819 Plus NAS running Minim server again was the DNA source. Rune Rock was running on a M.2 SSD in an Intel NUC 10i7 FNH and has the music stored on a 10TB Western Digital USB drive. The Room Control app was run on the same iPad Pro 2. 
The HDMI ARC input was tested using my 56 inch Panasonic Plasma TV. I had heard the SA30 on a pair of Vivid Audio GIA 4Gs at the distributors and was rather impressed. So I felt confident it would perform well too on my PMCs, despite the fact that it has a lower efficiency. Next to the things I noticed in my setup too, the bass control was remarkably good. Different from what Class D amps do, offering more texture. Midrange resolution appeared to be even better than noticed in my setup too. Pace and rhythm, micro dynamics and stereo image were better than I have heard up till now with other amps in this price range and in this setting. It's no air amp of course, but given its price the overall sound quality is remarkably good. What's there to say? The SA30 looks humble and stylish, has more than sufficient inputs and streaming options. It's versatile, has Dirac and MQA, a great remote control and so on. But above all, it sounds very good, or should I say very musical. The integration of digital and analog apparently is very well worked out. At 2799 euros it's a steal. This brings me to the end of this program. See you next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed that new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>